In this video, I will be doing an objects in equilibrium or forces in equilibrium exam question. We will be using closed vector diagrams or triangle of forces in order to help us answer this question. But what makes this question difficult is that our triangle is not going to be a 90 degree triangle. So I'm going to show you a special thing that you can do in order to answer a question like this. I'm going to teach you something that you may not have learned yet in math if you're watching the science video, um, because generally we teach this topic in the beginning of the year and you only do this rule in trigonometry, the sign rule, late on in the year. So maybe you haven't heard of it, maybe you have, but I'm going to show you how to use it to answer this question above. Let's go. So in this question, I've got a mountain climber. The person that is mountain climbing has a mass of 50 kilograms. So remember that is the mass, 50 kilograms, that is not the weight. And we're working with forces, so we know we're going to have to convert that to a weight. But this person is suspended from an inelastic piece of rope fixed to a cliff at X. So here's X, this is the rope. There's obviously gonna be tension in that rope. She pushes her legs against the cliff so that it makes an angle 45 degrees with the cliff, um, as indicated in the figure. And the angle that the rope makes with the cliff is 20 degrees. Now, the first question that they ask before we even jump into any calculations is, what is meant by point Y? Here's point Y over here. What is meant by point Y is an equilibrium. And what it basically means, this is only one mark. I want you guys to tell me that F net acting at that point is zero. So F net acting at point Y is zero. Remember, this is an objects in equilibrium or forces in equilibrium question. It basically means that acceleration is zero. Either point Y is stationary, so still not moving, or it's moving at a constant velocity. It's obvious in this case that it's not moving. So that is what it is meant by it is an equilibrium. F net is zero. It says draw a force diagram showing all the forces acting on point Y. Now a force diagram, that is my triangle, my closed triangle of forces, my closed vector diagram. It's not a free body diagram, don't get them confused. This is a force diagram showing all the forces. They basically, what I want you to do is I want you to draw a closed vector diagram. The reason why is because it's gonna help us with the next question and I want you to practice it. So how do you do that? First, let's start off with what forces are acting at point Y. Well, we know that her weight is acting downwards. Her weight is pushing her downwards over here. That is weight. Then we've got this, which is the force of her legs. Okay, the force of her legs. And you need to think, which way is that force going? Think about it. Her legs are not pulling her towards the face of the cliff or the face of the mountain. What are her legs doing? Her legs are pushing her away from the face of the cliff. If she, if she has to bend her knees or if her legs have to just, you know, go away over here, then she would go falling to the cliff. So what are her legs doing? Her legs are pushing her away like that. And what about the rope? The rope is holding her up. So the rope's force, the tension in the rope is going up and to the left. I hope you can all see that up and to the left. Think about it, if the rope had to snap, she would fall that way, which means the rope is pulling her up and to the left. Now, how do I arrange this in a triangle of forces? I like to start with the weight first because the weight goes straight down. So that is my weight. Then look at her legs. Her legs, the force of her legs are sort of acting like that. I'm going to call it force of legs. You can call it applied force, force applied, something like that like force applied, that's perfectly fine. And then the rope, the tension in the rope is pulling her up and to the left. Now take note how this is a closed vector diagram. I've got tail touching head, tail touching head, tail touching head. Just remember to draw this nice and proper for me, extend those tails, use a ruler. Now be very careful because there's no 90 degrees in this triangle. Nope, there's no 90 degrees. You need to think about the vectors, which way they are pointing, and figure out where to put the angles. Now, if you look at it very carefully, my rope is pulling up and to the left. Look at where this angle is. If this is my weight vector going down, or just a vertical vector, the y-axis, the 20 degrees is between the rope, the head of the rope, and the weight vector, or the y-axis, or something going straight up or straight down. So here I've got my tension vector, there's the head, and here's the weight vector going straight up or straight down. So that angle over there is 20. That's easy to see. And then again, the legs are here and the 
So it's pointing downwards like this, or this is my vertical or my Y axis or whatever. And here we have the force of the legs or the applied force. Look at the angle between those two. It's 45 degrees. So this angle over here will also be 45 degrees. Now, if that's 20 and that's 45, what would this third angle be over here? You know that the angles in a triangle must add up to 180. So 180 minus 20 minus 45, that's going to give us 115 degrees. Do you see now that there's no 90 degree angle in that triangle? And unfortunately, what that means is we can't just use our normal trig ratios, sine theta, cos theta, and tan theta, because those apply in a 90 degree triangle. And we don't have a 90 degree triangle. So you might be thinking, okay, so how do I work out one of these three forces? That's what we will be doing in the next question. So the next question says, determine the magnitude of the force which the rope exerts on her. So in other words, the force in the rope, the tension force. So in A, they are looking for tension. And in B, the magnitude of the force exerted by her legs. So we're looking for this force here, force applied or force of legs or whatever the case is. Just so you know, if you have a triangle of forces, whether it's a 90 degree triangle or not, you need to know at least one of these three vectors. You need to know the magnitude or the size of at least one of these three. So I already read the question to you. We're looking for tension. We're looking for force applied. How am I going to do this? That means that I should know the weight. Let's see. Nothing's on the diagram, but if you read the question carefully, they tell me the mass. And remember at the beginning, I said they give me the mass, which means I'm going to need to convert that to give me the weight. Now, how do you work out weight? It's FG or W, doesn't matter, is equal to mass times gravity. So the weight is equal to the mass times the gravity. The mass is 50 kilograms. Gravitational acceleration is 9.8. Then you say 50 times 9.8, and I get 490 Newton downwards. So that is my W or my FG. So this arrow over here, it's highlighted in green. This arrow over here has that magnitude. 490. Now still, you could say, but ma'am, it's not a 90 degree triangle. So I can't do sine, cos, or tan. So what must I do? What I'm going to show you is called the sine rule. And you may use it. You maybe already know it. Maybe you learned it in maths already. Maybe you're watching this late on in the year where you've already learned it in maths. Maybe you haven't. But it's really not that difficult. The sine rule works as follows. How it works is if we have a triangle like the one I have over here, this is what the sine rule states. It says, if I take my length of my side A, so I know it says A there, but remember that'll be a length like 10 meters or 10 Newton or the length of A. If I divide that by the sine of the angle that's opposite that side. So look at A. Here's A over here. It's the length. If I divide that length of that triangle by the sine of the angle opposite it, so what angle is opposite this length over here? What angle is opposite this green side over here? Angle A. So sine of that angle, that ratio will be equal, or that fraction will be equal to length B divided by the sine, I hope you can see it, where's length B? Here's length B, divided by the sine of the angle opposite that side. So what is the angle opposite length B? Angle B, so sine B, equals length C. Here's length C, so let's do that in blue. Length C divided by the sine of the angle opposite that length. So what's opposite C? Angle C. All those fractions, all those ratios will equal one another, okay? That's what it means. And you might see the sine rule like this. You may have seen it reversed like that. That is the same thing. We can do it like that as well. So you can do the sine of the angles on top and then the opposite sides at the bottom. It does not matter. So how will I do it in this context over here? Well, let's try and solve for T first. So I'm going to leave F applied or force of legs for now. How do I solve for T? Think about it. I'm looking for T, so I'm going to say T, using the sine rule, that's the length of the side. What is opposite, or which angle is opposite this side over here? This angle over here. 
So remember the sine rule says you take the length of the side, which is t, I'm looking for it, and you divide it by the sine of the angle that's opposite that side, sine of 45. Then we make an equals. Now the point is we need to solve for t. We need an unknown. We need to solve for that unknown. So in my other fraction, I want to aim to include the side that I do know, the side over here, the 490, the w. So at the top, I've got my sides. So I'm going to put w, which I know is 490. That's my weight. And which angle is opposite the weight? Take a look. Which angle is opposite the weight? 115. So sine 115. And I hope you know how to solve that. You can cross multiply if you want. Or what I do is I take my calculator. I work out the fraction that is on the right. So, sorry, there it is. So, let me just repeat because I was in the way. So, T is this side over here, divided by the sine of the angle opposite it, sine 45. And then I know the weight. I know this length over here of this triangle, so to speak. I know the magnitude. It's 490. So, 490 divided by sine of the angle opposite. So, what is opposite the, the side over here, the green side? 115. Okay, so just take note that at the top of my fraction, I have my sides or my lengths of my sides. At the bottom, I have sine of my angles. Just keep, um, keep in mind that if you do sides at the top on the one fraction, you have to do sides at the top on the other fraction. If you do sine 45, at the, if, you, if you do the angles at the bottom, it must stay at the bottom. Right, so now what I do is I take my calculator and I work out this piece over here. So I'm going to type in 490 divided by sine 115, and then I get an answer. And then I take the sine 45 over and I multiply whatever this answer is by sine 45. So I'm isolating T. So you first work out this fraction, you get an answer, I get 540,65, blah, 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 blah. You take that answer and you multiply it by sine 45. So times sine 45, and I get tension as being 382,30 Newton. I just want us to focus on getting the magnitude for today. Okay, 382,30. Now, I want you guys to try this, and I want you to try, so we just got tension, we just got that one, I want you to try this, but I want you to try and get the second force, which is the force of legs. So, I'm looking for force of legs, that is this arrow over here, I'm looking for the length of that arrow essentially, the magnitude of that arrow, the magnitude of that vector, I'm going to call it F applied, or just F is fine. We divide it by the sine of the angle opposite that side. So sine of 20. And we make it equal to a fraction where I know the top and the bottom. Now remember, we discussed the fact that I know the weight. I know the weight. I calculated it in the beginning. I know the weight. So I'm going to go, okay, cool. I know the length of that side. It's 490 divided by which angle is opposite 490? 115. So sine 115. Then again, work this out, take the divide by sine 20 over, it's going to become multiply by sine 20, and I get 184,91 Newton. I hope that makes sense. When doing it like this, you do not need a 90 degree triangle, because we're using the sine rule, which is applicable in all triangles, it doesn't have to be a 90 degree triangle. I hope that was helpful and I hope to see you in another video where I go over more exam questions. Remember to subscribe for more physics. I'll see you in the next video.